because of the efforts of men and women like these, we are rebuilding and we are on our way to recovery. <coughs> Communities like Moore, El Reno, and Bethel Acres are open for business again. Main streets across central Oklahoma struck by the tornadoes are once again thriving. And we owe that success to our resilient, hard-working people. They are, as we say, Oklahoma strong. <laughs> our schools are also being made stronger and safer. Briarwood and Plaza Towers Elementary Schools are being rebuilt with safe rooms. Our challenge moving forward is to improve safety in all of our schools, and that process has begun by identifying our current needs. To help with that, the Office of Emergency Management is conducting voluntary safety assessments for districts that request them, helping evaluate the safety of our schools and making recommendations for possible safety upgrades. Next, we need to act to ensure that our schools have the means to pay for those upgrades. Last week, I announced my support for House Joint Resolution 1092, authored by Representatives McBride and Eccles. HJR 1092 is a constitutional amendment allowing every school district to pursue a one-time increase in bonding capacity to fund upgrades like storm shelters, safe rooms, and protections from dangerous intruders. Oklahoma has approximately 1,800 schools each built differently, each with its own unique needs. This measure preserves local control, allowing each school district and community to make their own decisions about how to address their own needs. Some schools will wish to build safe rooms, while others will retrofit existing structures to withstand tornadoes. Schools that already have safe rooms or storm shelters may choose to focus on security precautions to protect their children from intruders. This is a responsible plan for improving safety and security at our schools. We aren't forcing new taxes on Oklahoma families or businesses. We aren't passing new mandates, but most importantly, we are making our schools safer. legislators and our citizens who are engaged on this issue and exploring policies to help protect our children to improve our school safety. Thank you for that. I appreciate that. I believe our plan offers the best and most realistic way to fund storm shelters and safety and other security upgrades. You know, others may disagree, but we should all remember that we share a common goal, and that is to protect our children and to save lives. Now, not only do we want our schools to be safe, but we also want to provide each child in Oklahoma with a world-class education. In fact, improving the quality and the outcomes of education is the single most important thing we can do to attract and retain jobs in our state to alleviate po poverty, and to help Oklahomans have fulfilling and productive lives. But here's a fact. The best indicator of personal outcome, uh, excuse me, of personal income is educational attainment. The best indicator of personal income is educational attainment. Similarly, the best predictor of societal problems like drug use, teen pregnancy, and crime is educational attainment. For many, education is the best and the only way out of poverty. Our job as a state is to empower our students, our parents, our teachers to succeed and setting the bar high and challenging each other to succeed. And I believe every child can learn. No child should ever fail to get a world-class education because our policymakers 
believe success is too difficult. The majority of you don't believe that. But on occasion, there are some people in our state that believe children can't learn. That's why we need to work on two fronts. First, we need to continue to improve K-12 through public school results. We know that we are graduating high school seniors who aren't ready to enter into the workforce or college, and that has to change in Oklahoma. Second, we have to increase the number of Oklahomans who continue their education beyond high school, either by attending college or a career technology center. A high school diploma is no longer enough to reach the American dream. Today in Oklahoma, only one third of all the jobs available to those with just a high school diploma or less are in our state's economy. And the majority of those jobs pay less than 25,000 a year. The new minimum for success is education beyond high school. Many Oklahomans are falling short of the new minimum. And that's just not a problem. It's a crisis. We are taking active steps to address this crisis, and it is essential that we continue to move forward. For instance, too often we set children up for failure by sending them on to higher grades without the reading skills they need. But we've changed course by requiring that third graders have to read before moving on to the fourth grade. Thank you for doing that. We've also implemented the A through F grading system that lets parents, students, teachers, and administrators know how their school is performing. So if it is underperforming, we can fix it. And to those who say that that system is unfair or can't work, I say let's look at U.S. Grant High School here in Oklahoma City. This is an urban inner city school. It faces all the challenges that we associate with a school in that category, both here and throughout the country. And four years ago, it would have been an F school. It was failing our children, and it was producing outcomes that were embarrassing for our students, our parents, and the faculty. And they decided enough was enough, and they made changes. They engaged the parents and the students and revamped their teaching models and reset expectations. And today, U.S. Grant is a B-plus school, and I'll bet it's well on its way to being an A school. We have with us U.S. Grant principal Clay Vineyard with some of the students and teachers, so I would like for you to help me in thanking them for the great work that they're doing in the school. Let's give them a round of applause.